Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we can work with complex numbers. Now, by definition, we said that i is going to be equal to the square root of negative 1. And we said that any complex number that we have is going to be a, in this form, a plus b i, where the real part of z is going to be a, and the imaginary part of z is going to be b, or the coefficient of the imaginary unit. Now, when it comes to simplifying complex numbers, the one thing that we have to remember is that i, the imaginary unit, should have no other exponent than 1. Okay, and that's going to be a very key aspect. And one of the reasons why is because we can always go ahead and simplify it so that it is something with i, or something, or the i will just automatically disappear by the nature of the exponent. So, for example, let's say, for example, i squared. i squared is the exact same thing as the square root of negative 1 quantity squared, which means that it's negative 1. So if you have i squared, you, you replace it with negative 1 because that's what it's equivalent to. i to the third, of course, is going to be i squared times by i, which is negative i. So notice it's simplifying to something with i to the first power. If we have i to the fourth, that's just going to be i squared squared, and that's just going to be negative 1 squared, which is going to be equal to 1. So notice if you have i to the fourth, that's just going to be equal to 1. So notice that you're either going to eliminate the i because it's going to simplify to something that's going to be either negative 1 or 1, or you're going to come up with something that has the imaginary unit with a power of 1. Okay, so that's going to be a very important thing to remember when we're talking about simplifying complex numbers. Now remember that with operations with complex numbers, they're all the same as if you were to use uh, real number algebraic operations. There's nothing different there. The one thing that we do want to go ahead and remember, though, is that you want to rationalize your denominator. And if you see an i in the denominator, you need to go ahead and rationalize the denominator by using the conjugate, because, of course, we don't want radicals in the denominator. So let's just take an example here. Let's say, for example, that z is equal to 2 plus i, and w is equal to negative 1 plus 2i. What is the real part of z divided by w squared? Okay, so here we go. Let's take a look at just this part first. Here's z over w squared. So that's 2 plus i. w squared is going to be negative 1 plus 2i quantity squared. And notice that the numerator is, not, is going to be the same. The denominator, I'm going to have to use the FOIL method to expand that. So I come up with 1 minus 4i plus 4i squared. So notice you got i with something that has an, an i with an exponent other than 1. Well, we know that i squared is just going to be equal to a negative 1, so this just becomes 1 minus 4i minus 4, and we can simplify that now to minus 3 minus 4i in the denominator. Now remember, you need to rationalize your denominator because even though this doesn't look like a radical, it is, because the imaginary unit is the square root of negative 1. So we multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, which is negative 3 plus 4i divided by negative 3 plus 4i, and again, I'm going to have to use FOIL. So I come up with negative 6 minus 3i plus 8i plus 4i squared divided by 9 plus 16i squared. So again, notice that we're coming back to this again. We have i's which have an exponent other than 1, and so we need to simplify those. And notice that the i squared, of course, is just going to be a negative 1. And this i squared, of course, is also going to be a negative 1. And we can simplify using the same same operations and rules, algebraic operation rules that we have with real numbers, and we come up with negative 10 plus 5i divided by negative 7. So now what we can do is by just taking a look at this, which is the, the, the quotient of two complex numbers, I've been able to simplify it into a simple complex number that looks like this, and now I can go ahead and determine the real value of this particular, sorry, z over w squared complex number, and I can say that that's going to be 10 over 7. Okay, so just to recap here, remember our definition of the imaginary unit is such, all complex numbers look like this. When we simplify complex numbers, we just need to remember that i should have no other exponent other than 1. All the operations, algebraic operations that we've done with real numbers apply the same way to complex numbers. And we also need to remember to rationalize your denominator. And in particular, remember that i, as it is a, the square root of negative 1, is a radical. And we 
you need to rationalize your denominator, especially if you see an I in the denominator. And then we can go ahead and simplify even complex, uh, complex numbers, complex, complex numbers that look like this, to something that looks like this, so that we can now go ahead and determine what the real and the imaginary parts are for that particular uh, quantity. Okay, so we'll go ahead and practice some of these rules uh, in class and we'll see how we can do. See you later. Bye.